Oh, welcome in the latest episode of that SEC podcast. I'm your host, Michael Braddon. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter. And I'm joined, as always, by my cousin Shane, who goes by Big Orange Balls on Twitter. What are you up to, you big Tennessee homer? <laughs> hey, buddy, what's going on? Oh, man. Uh, uh, I'm telling you, Mike, let me tell you. Let me tell you okay. how it's going on. <laughs> Have you been to Gatlinburg lately? <laughs> no, it's been a minute. Uh, well, you're the only one that wasn't up there this weekend, Mike. I, I mean, I thought <laughs> thought January, I'd just slide in there. You know, we'd hit some of our favorite spots and, and just have a good old time. But, man, I we were in line. I was, tell, I was joking before we got on the show. It felt like you're at a theme park, but there's no ride up ahead. You know, we're just like slowly in this change, just kind of moving up this hill. All us fat asses, you know, half of us drunk. Uh, but we did. We had a good time. Got to see some snow. The kids had blast. But uh, it's good to be back, Mike. I'll tell you that. I, it is good to get out of there for a little bit. It was wild, man. It was wild. You know, it's funny. When COVID hit, I, 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 I work up there, too, you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of Gatlinburg. I, I give them a hard time. But when COVID hit, it was so funny because that place blew up overnight. And, and, you know, all these, all these, you know, health nuts, granola heads, they came in and they wanted to get in the mountains and, and start hiking and everything. It's like, hey, let's get away from, from COVID. We'll go up here into the national park, but they forget we use the same Walmart, Mike. So that's why I've had <laughs> about every variant of COVID that's came through here, you know? So, but, uh, no, we had a great time this weekend. I, um, found a, a couple of great spots and, uh, just really trying to sober up, man. I, I think I think I t- Gatlinburg, they got it figured out, man. It used to they got wine tours, moonshine tours, apple cider tours, you know, anything and everything that you could tour and get drunk with. They've got it up there in Gatlinburg. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a tough one to transition, isn't it, Mike? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, you know, you just never know where you're going to go with cousin Shane. But I do have a special announcement, Shane. I, th- I feel like this is the best time. Uh, to, to kind of let the listeners know that uh, even though it sounds like you had a long weekend, you're mm-hmm. about to go on another long vacation. So yeah. Cousin Shay's going to be taking a break from the show. Don't worry. He's not fired or anything. He, <laughs> I, I'd get fired before he did. But, uh, you know, college football season, obviously to an end. So yeah. I'm going to be spending the next uh, couple weeks recapping the the season that was going to have a ton of interviews and guests but i want to give the tennessee homer some time to recharge them batteries before spring football gets here so yeah shane ain't going away he's just no. taking a break that's right maybe you need a break from shane you know his <laughs> hot takes which you're about to hear here you know this so now i'm gonna be floating around like you said mike I, i'm not gone i'm just you know uh when you work full time and and you got a family and and you do this, it it, it really is all time consuming and uh, and I wouldn't change it for the world, Mike. I absolutely love college football. I love SEC football. It's been a, another great, fantastic. It, every year gets more and more fun. Uh, we we get more and more things. We're doing more. We're seeing more and we're interacting with more. So you know, I'm I'm all for that. But it does take a toll on the family a little bit. So I wanted to kind of just step away. For about a month, uh, just, you know, pretty much the month of February here till the end of February, I'm going to spend some time with the family. Uh, You know, my wife, she's got some plans, things that she wants to do. So I I said, honey, you know, what what can I say? I've been pulled away so long that uh, I want to give back a little bit. So, but that being said, Mike, I still am going to try to get some sort of interaction, Mike. Uh, We talked about vlog. I just, I still don't know exactly what that is, but I'm going to (laughs) start doing something. So, you know, a little bit every day, you kind of know what cousin Shane's getting into. Maybe what, uh, maybe some light news in the news, you know, you can kind of get my side of it so i'm not totally away from the show and if anything big does hit i'll be jumping right on with uh with cousin mike here so um again don't i haven't left i'm just taking a little bit of a breather you know maybe maybe lose some weight maybe next time i come on you know i'm gonna i'll be a little lighter and you won't you won't recognize me anymore you think the other (laughs) the other cousins on here (laughs) so before you go shay we thought it would be a perfect time to look back at some of our 
worst takes from last mm. season, last off season. And believe me, there is a long, yeah. long list to pick from. So, I mean, you could pretty much just go back and watch any predictions podcast we did over the season. You're going to find about half dozen predictions that make us look like idiots. So if you need a, a good way to entertain yourself, go back and check that out. But I tried to pick Shane. The worst of the worst hot takes <laughs> from you and I. So we're going to get to that in just a minute. But, uh, man, I felt we had to start with this, Shane. Some terrible news here in yeah. Athens. Uh, obviously, over the weekend, they celebrated their latest national championship. Big celebration down there in Athens. Credit to, to Kirby and the entire program for, for doing what you know, hardly anyone ever does is win back-to-back -back national championships. But after that tragic news in the middle of the night, Georgia fans waking up to a broken hearts because Georgia offensive lineman Devin Willock and Georgia staffer Chandler LaCroix, they died, Shane, in a, a yeah. single vehicle car accident. There was two other people in the vehicle um, I, I don't have their name on hand here, but one of them apparently is very injured. The other one is safe, but man, just you go from the highs of highs, you're, you're at the, the height of college football world, and then you have this this devastating news. Uh, our, our hearts go out to, to Georgia. Thoughts and prayers, obviously, to the victims and, and their families and loved ones. You, you hate to hear it, Mike. It, I mean... So it's just surrounded so much good news, so much good things happening down there. And then something like this and, and you, you know, you, 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 you got to take pause. You got, you know, it's, it's yeah. I mean, there's no words. There's just, it's bigger in football. And uh, I just, my thoughts and prayers with the families, um, you know, with the dog nation down there, this is, it's terrible, terrible news. So uh, uh, yeah, I just, I, I hate it for everybody involved. Well, there's no good way to transition from that, Shane, but we did have uh, some big news here in the SEC, only news item on the show this episode. Again, we're going to do, Shane, it's so hard to keep up with the transfer portal, but <laughs> that sucker is closing here in the middle of the week. So uh, yeah. I'm going to do a full recap of all the players and where they're going, the winners, losers, and all that. So we'll get to all that news. But the news I did want to hit you with, Shane, so it's official now, Pete Golding, Leaves Alabama, defensive coordinator, joining Lane Kiffin down there in Oxford. And uh, if you missed it, go check it out. I was on Paul Feinbaum's show. As, as soon as this happened, they, they reached out to have me on. But basically the thoughts I shared there, Shane, this is one of those where Alabama fans are happy <laughs> and I think <laughs> Ole Miss fans are happy. I mean, it's so weird that this happens. But I think Pete Golding is a very – very good defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. I just don't think he's one of the best of the best. And if you've been at Alabama that long and, and you had some productive defenses, I'm not saying they were awful by any means, but, uh, you know, they were, according to metrics from our buddy CFB professor Adam McClintock, Pete Golding, number 31 defensive play caller in the country. So, again, mm -hmm. very good, not elite, but last season Ole Miss's play callers we're at 79 on the defensive <laughs> side of the ball. So, again, major, major upgrade for Ole Miss. Alabama fans happy, though. We don't know who the new defensive coordinator is just yet. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on uh, Lane Kiffin. I don't even want to say stealing, but uh, hiring Nick Saban's defensive coordinator. Pretty interesting, don't you think? Yeah, I want to say stealing. I, I mean, it, it, it makes for better clicks, Mike. You know? <laughs> Lane Kiffin coming across the enemy and sneaking in there in the middle of the night. Uh, I think I think this is a good get. Uh, I, I, obviously, it's it's not it's not a home run hire. You know, you don't think right offhand, but you know, we this is one of those coordinators you may look back two years from now and say, "Damn, they got a good one." Yeah. You know, so I think when you're surrounded by so much talent down there in Tuscaloosa that. You know, sometimes sometimes you don't know how good the coordinators are. I mean, how many times have we seen somebody strike out and then go get a head coaching job and then and then they they just they ain't got it, you know? And, and then yeah. sometimes they sneak out and you're just like, golly, you know, Saban kept him on staff. I mean, look, we got one that just won the second national champ. I mean, how many years did did, did Kirby stay down there? So I, I think I don't know. I, I'm kind of torn on this one. I I, I 
I think this is good for Ole Miss, but I also think it's good for Alabama. I think a little fresh blood down there is not a bad idea. They've they've got to mix some things up. So um, I'm kind of with the media here. I, I think it's a win-win. Now let me ask you this: Would this be a win, Shay? Because uh, the you know the the most popular name, and I think they they'd already hire him if there was no roadblock, so to speak. And, and I'm not 100 percent sure there are, but uh, Jeremy. Pruitt, Shane, I, I got a name we all know well in the SEC, rumored back to Alabama. Is, is He's one of the leading candidates to be defensive coordinator. Certainly, we know Pruitt is not great at being a head coach, but uh, well, great defensive coordinator he's at Alabama, Georgia, Florida State, and I think mm-hmm. you can even make the case uh, some of his Tennessee defenses were pretty <laughs> decent, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, and, and now that – you know, all the recruits can eat Chick Fil A. I think he's gonna be. <laughs> I think he's gonna be in good shape down there. So, no, I, I think. I, don't get me wrong, Pruitt. Yeah, I, it, things didn't work out in Tennessee, and and uh, but I didn't hate the guy. You know, right. I there was some good things along the way, and 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 almost hated that he got busted because I thought better days were ahead. But. Uh, you know that I'm, that's who I am. I'm optimistic, Shane here, and so I think getting down there, if, if given an opportunity, he'll he'll just show you again why he's one of the best defensive minds in the coaching biz. I, I truly think so, and, and does what I think Saban is trying to create down there, trying to kind of, kind of get back to the roots and uh, a little bit, and you know, bulk up the front and you know, aggressive secondary. That's 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 the key, and, and I think that's something that they can do down there. Easily, they got the talent, so I think it'd be a good hire, man. I, I think it'd be a hell of a hire, and and he knows that he knows the area well. I mean, coach right. down there at Hoover. I mean, he's he he knows he knows all the high school coaches down there. So I think as far as the I think the biggest part will be the recruiting itself. I joked at the beginning, but you're getting a defensive mind, but you're also going to get a hell of a recruiter out there. Mm-hmm. Now let me ask you one more name, Shane. Glenn Schumann, co-defensive coordinator at Georgia, mm-hmm. co- coaches the in- inside linebackers as well. He's arguably the best recruiter that Kirby has got on staff. And, um, and the reason he intrigues me so much, Shane, is for years and years, people have tried to steal away Nick Saban assistance to mm-hmm. elevate their program. And how – Ironic, Shane, would it be if we got Nick Saban, the GOAT, the greatest of all time, trying to steal away Kirby Smart assistance to better the Alabama program? <laughs> I mean, if if no other sign that Georgia is currently the king of college football, I mean, that would be it, wouldn't it? Oh, how the turntables. <laughs> is that how the meme goes? <laughs> oh, I think that would be good, man. And I, I think it's just a staple of what Kirby's doing down there in Athens. The fact that you're losing uh, c- coaches to Nick Saban. I mean, that just doesn't happen. Right. It's a rehab facility, you know, but they, <laughs> not anymore. I mean, they are they are trying to get some talent in there because, you know, there's this. It, it's going to come down, and we're going to talk about it here in a little bit, some of our hot takes. One of the hot takes was trying to pick somebody other than these two schools to win the SEC championship, but – Right now, that's what it's going to come down to is one of these two programs. So, uh, and sometimes it's just a coach. Sometimes it's it's somebody that can get that one one last recruit that you needed. So, mm-hmm. uh, I think that'd be a fascinating hire. Yeah, and last thing I got on this, Shane. I mean, we cannot overstate the importance not only of this hire, but again, go back and check out interview with Paul Feinbaum if you missed it. We put it on our YouTube channel. Paul says uh, Bill O'Brien is also gone with. And not official yet, but that that is anticipated. So there's going to be two coordinator changes at Alabama. Yeah. And with where Georgia is right now, I mean, I get it. Alabama, maybe aside from Georgia, the, the best place in college football right now, Nick Saban should have his pick of any offensive mind, defensive mind he wants. They, they've got to want to come down there to coach for him, to try to win a championship. Uh, but these are going to be defining hires, Shay, that I think th- these will determine how long Nick Saban keeps coaching. I, I think it's that important yeah. because if they if they continue to slide under Georgia, under LSU, God forbid Texas A&M rises up. I mean, they could get buried quick, even their mighty Alabama, if he makes 
two or even one bad hire, I think it's that big of a deal. This this is a huge offseason for Nick Saban, don't you think? Absolutely, and I think getting rid of Bill would be a good idea, Mike. And, and if that does happen, is there anybody on your short list maybe you're keeping an eye on? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the one guy, and I'm kind of, I don't know if this is a joke really, but, uh, did, have you heard about old Cliff Kingsbury? I mean, apparently he, yeah. he's told everybody, Hey, I, I'm going to Thailand. Don't contact me. So he may have eliminated <laughs> gonna, himself right then and there. You know what? I was going to say, uh, well, unless that's a new nickname for Tuscaloosa, you know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I thought he was in Egypt trying to find himself. So I don't know. That, that'd be interesting. You, know, you, you think you think Bobby Petrino just one more one more stop before the season's over? <laughs> How about you hit you did hit the nail on the head though, Shane. Alabama has always been known as the coach rehab. Yeah, and I don't know that this guy really well. The fans in Gainesville would disagree, but I don't know if this guy technically needs to rehab his image. But what about Dan Mullen, mm. who the knock on him is he can't recruit. I get it. He's an outstanding offensive mind. He had one of the best offenses in SEC history not that mm-hmm. long ago in, in the 2020 season. He's had some success against Kirby Smart. He's had some success against Alabama. So I yeah. think there's some mutual respect there. I don't know they could get Dan Mullen, but if Dan Mullen is going to get back into coaching, particularly at, at the, an assistant level, which, again, I don't, I don't know if he's got any interest in doing it, but if you go down to Alabama, you win a national championship – or, or win an SEC, I think Dan Mullen, once again, could probably have his pick of, of any, I don't know about any, but, but, you know, a top 15, top 20 college football job. Absolutely. I You ever watch these coaches after they get fired and you're like, man, they got, they still got it, you know. They still got a little gas in the tank. Yeah. And I think, I think Dan did the right thing. He stayed around college football. He didn't just go tuck his tail and hide, you know. Mm-hmm. I think I think this is a guy that's back in the league sooner than later, looking for the right opportunity. And I'm telling you right now, if there's an OC job down there in Alabama and you have an opportunity to do it, do it. Two years, you got your head coaching job wherever you want. Right, exactly. Well, Shane, this may, this may be tough to listen to. <laughs> it, Not it for the to audience, watch. but for, for was, you and I. This is going to be tough. The worst predictions we had putting a, you know, closing the book on 2022 season, Shane. I don't even know where to begin, but I'm going to go just because they're so dominant, they're so great, and they just had a a dang victory parade. Here's me calling Stetson Bennett, Shane, the 10th best quarterback in the SEC and flat out saying – no chance they win the national championship again with this guy under center. Now, man, this this is going to catch a lot of heat, I think. Mm. But may may need another beer on this one. I'm I'm not trying to disrespect the guy. He's got a national championship. Oh no, Stetson Bennett, oh, number shit. ten. Okay, I went there. <laughs> I thought he was like, wait, what? <laughs> Stetson Bennett, I got him number ten. That's kind of that's kind of bad, Mike. And, and again, we are just loaded. With quarterbacks here in the SEC, I can hear Georgia fans typing right now. <laughs> Listen to this. Hey, bastard. Stetson Bennett, hell of a story. Just yeah. led him to the national championship. I hope he does it again, Shane. Yeah. But I just don't see it. I don't see him leading the charge. You know, he's going to need players to step up all around. I know they they got the best tight end room in the country. Mm-hmm. All they do is develop elite alignment and running backs down there. So he's going to have some help. He's going to be a solid player at the end of the year. But are you telling me right now, you, this is something you said even. Huh? That, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> would, would Kentucky, if if we could do oh, trades I, I in the you. SEC, yeah. would yeah. Mark Stoops pick up the phone and say, hey, Kirby, I'll trade you Stetson Bennett for Will Levis straight yeah. up. Would would Mark Stoops make that call? No. Hell no, no he wouldn't make no. that call. So, I mean, I, I'm just putting – I'm trying to be as fair as I can. I think yeah. Stetson is a good quarterback. I just don't think he's elite. Uh, but, hell – Let's let him go out there and prove me wrong again. He deserves a statue out there. He won the national championship. He, he'll go down as a legend down there. The mailman. Yeah, but I mean that's but that's the thing. Do you, do you not factor that in a little bit when you're thinking about a quarterback? Not just the tangible you know assets that they have with throwing and running, but just winning. Um, because there's just some quarterbacks that you that you watch and you're just like, yeah, if you look at the frame. Yeah, he may right. not look 
pretty. You know, I, I'll never forget the picture. There was a picture there in the spring game. And the the three other quarterbacks are with Stetson, and, and Stetson looked like the smallest dude out there. You know, he didn't right. he didn't look like a fifth year senior. You know, he didn't look like a national championship. I mean, um, another one is uh, that Clemson <laughs> that Clemson receiver you always see. And like, oh yeah, he plays with the Raiders now. Yeah, there's that meme floating <laughs> around. You know, it talks about this one. One of these guys is in the NFL. One of them's not. You know, but it, it, with Stetson, I, I sometimes I. I think we lose that along the way, and I was, I was, I was, I've, I've tried to get him canned all, time, right, all year last year. I was like, this is not the guy, you know, until he wins a national championship. And if it weren't for him, they wouldn't have. Man, y'all burn us, y'all burn us, y'all kept telling us how bad we were, and y'all couldn't understand it, and you know, and we kept winning, and. And we kept embarrassing people, but y'all had other storylines. And it was 49 to three, and it was, you know, 65 to seven. It was everything. And y'all didn't want to believe it, because you didn't, <laughs> that makes no sense to me. Yeah. Hey, but you know, um, screw it, we got two rings, man, you know? No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> so, I literally could not have gotten that one any more wrong, you know what? Yeah, and I, I was trying to tell you, Mike. I was trying to tell you. I mean, that was one of the cases. I, now, I wasn't saying he was the best quarterback, but I was like, man, there's no reason he should be that low on your list. And <laughs> and uh, I want to ask, Mike, and I know we're getting into a whole bunch of shit calls that we've made <laughs> along the way, mm -hmm. but, you know, I don't know if Kirby is, is – Getting the credit, I mean, he he let he's let these boys know every negative piece of media information that's come through there. He loves that. That's rat poison. He wants to get in these boys' minds. Right. And and I don't know. I, I'm watching. I, I'm watching Stetson here the last few days, and 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 I get you know he he's a prideful kid, and and he, he felt like it was him against the world. But is he is he kind of? tarnishing his his legacy down there as a as a georgia quarterback because i don't get me wrong there are naysayers out there's still people that don't think he's a good quarterback there's still people like myself that doesn't think he's gonna make it in the nfl so i'm not saying you know but if he doesn't if he's three four years back up in the nfl and then he's done mm -hmm. i mean we're gonna look back to his college career as his peak football statement and and the fact that it's tarnished by his media relations here at the end do you think that comes back and bites him at all or or are you surprised by just by his by his negativity it's just he, he is he is in his own world man you know I, th I think he's just went through so much uh haters and doubters whatever you want to call it yeah that now that he's on the other side of it i think he kind of I just don't think he gives a damn about what anybody thinks or says or anything because even a lot of these Georgia fans, I'm not calling them out because clearly we just played the clip of I'm the idiot calling him yeah. out. But a lot of these Georgia people, Shane, were doubting him. So I, th I think all that motivates him and it's, you know, that's probably why he's going to go down as one of the greatest players, not just quarterbacks, but players in Georgia history, two national championships after a 41 year drought. No, sir. I mean, he, short of committing a crime down there, I don't think you could tarnish that okay. legacy down there in Athens. I really don't. Yeah, he's just, boy, he's he is he's just an asshole these days, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, I mean, that's that's okay. That's okay. He's He's got, like you said, he's got two rings. And, um, but you want to talk about disappointments, Mike? I'm going to tell you, your cousin Shane. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. 30 minutes into the show, realized he wasn't recording. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the audio, but you're just now getting the, the video here. So that one's on me. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Well, hey, and speaking, I just want to get this one out of the way as well, Shane. Because speaking, speaking of disappointments. <laughs> <laughs> I had another doozy, Shane, on one of uh, – my many appearances there on the Paul Feinbaum show. This is probably the, the one I'm most known for down there in Athens now. Forget that I picked you to win the national championship when you hadn't done it in 41 years. Oh, no, they forgot all about that because I picked South Carolina to beat them <laughs> Bulldogs. Let's, let's cut it over to the clip here. 
I'm not looking for it. Well, I actually am. Uh, so give me something, uh, you know, give, give me a statement or a take that will surprise the audience the most. If you, if you had to zero in on one outcome of the upcoming college football season that will have people going, whoa, I, I wasn't expecting that, what would it be? Well, the one that I keep circling, I keep uh, you know throwing out there, and, and I'm, I'm catching a lot of heat for Paul, and that's I think that's why you like having me on your show for all the heat. But uh, how about this one? South Carolina knocking off the Georgia Bulldogs week three of the season. No. In, in Columbia, South no. Carolina. You can't say that on this program. We're on the Georgia uh, Bulldog bandwagon, so you're calling it right here. Uh, and I know I'm sounding like a like like a typical anchor here at the local news station. You mean you're saying um, you're saying you're calling South Carolina to beat Georgia right now, aren't you? Absolutely. I mean, you're talking a team here that that started <laughs> literally a, a coach at starting quarterback last season, yet they managed to make the postseason in Shane Beamer's first year and win North Carolina. I mean, no one expected them to beat North Carolina in that bowl game, myself included. They they trashed Mac Brown's Tar Heel team. So I think you're you're getting a significant upgrade at the quarterback position. You've upgraded your weapons at running back and receiver. And uh, Clayton White's defense was one of the biggest surprises in the SEC last season. So, uh, yeah, I certainly think South Carolina's got an outstanding opportunity to shock the world here come uh, week three of the season. Well, I asked and you delivered, so I, I have to give you credit. Oh, buddy. All right, Shane, in case you've forgotten, because this was you know week two or three of the season, actual score of that game, Georgia, 48, South Carolina, they scored seven. I, I think it was like in, in the final moments of the game. So basically a 48-0 to zero stomp in there. Mm-hmm. Well, how do I even have a job doing this? That, <laughs> to be fair, Mike, you, you were thinking like, end of the season South Carolina, not the beginning of the season. <laughs> yeah. So you saw potential there. I, I, I'm going to defend you there. Uh, but, no, this one this one came up early, and uh, I think you got tagged more for hot takes or cold takes or whatever that, that Twitter page is that keeps dragging you <laughs> through the mud. They've got you as favorites, you know. So this one was all over it, brother. You, re- you really nailed this one. <laughs> Oh, uh, I hate that that they're all you right now because I know there's some me on here. Oh this. yeah, oh yeah. How about this one, Shane? Doubted LSU. Yeah, I picked them fifth in the SEC West. Of course, they made all the way to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Let's kick it over to my thoughts on LSU during the preseason. Sure. So again, number five, almost interchangeable five and six, but I'm going LSU. Yeah. And I think it's just because LSU. I know they hit you know another. New coaching staff, transfer portal, yeah. kind of the same issues. But the players that are coming back, I think, are a little bit better at LSU than Ole Miss. Right. And that's kind of the deciding factor. Got a lot of respect for Brian Kelly yeah. and, and everything there. But, again, I think whoever the starting quarterback is is going to break out. Mm-hmm. We've got Kayshawn Butte. we got a defensive line that may be the best in the West. I mean, there is a lot to like about LSU. I may even have them too low at number five. You got, you're starting to convince me, Mike. See what I'm saying? You know, I, I'm, I'm a little. Ooh. <laughs> well, Shane, oh. if you think that's bad, though, guess who I had number two in the SEC East? One of the a team that lost to Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had as the biggest contender to them dogs in the East. Let's kick it over to my idiot prediction, Florida being number two in the East. And if you sense a common theme, Cousin Shane is like the voice of reason saying, why in the hell are you picking all these? Should have listened to him. <laughs> but I don't know, man. What, Here's the thing what with separates Florida. them? What, what, is it quarterback play? Is it defense? AR-15, it, again, yeah. put him high on my quarterback list. I think he's going to explode. I think everybody, again, we go to the schedule talk. They get Kentucky early in the year. They get them at home. Mm-hmm. Nine out of ten people are saying Kentucky's going to win that game. I don't think it's in Florida's DNA to lose to Kentucky. I think yeah. that's why Dan Mullen's got his ass fired. So I think Billy Napier's going to have his boys ready to play to beat Kentucky week two. That's why. That's another reason I got Kentucky a little bit lower. I think they're going to drop that game. And I think it's perfect. Everybody, everybody outside of Gainesville says Florida's going to lose to Utah week yeah. one. I don't have respect for Utah. 
Yeah. Like an SEC team. Coming to this heat, coming to this humidity. Gators could lose by 40 points. Yeah. Billy Napier's not on the hot seat. Right. He's playing with house money. I think they upset Utah. I think they beat Kentucky. And that, that snowball will get rolling. I think they, again, I think they'll beat Tennessee because they always beat Tennessee. Yeah. And and we'll get to the West here in a minute. But I, I think, think I, I think Billy Napier is going to take that LSU game personal after not even getting considered yeah. for that job, being at Louisiana, uh, you know, doing so well at Louisiana. So I think they're doing well in the crossover too. I was helping you, man. I threw a life, <laughs> life vest out there. You just said, no, nah, I'm going to swim with this one. So oh, looking man. back, Shane, they, which which was worse, Florida number two in the East or LSU yeah. fifth in the West? I mean, they're both awful. Is there is there one that that's even worse? No, I, I think the, uh, I mean, clearly LSU going to an SEC West championship. Yeah, I've I've got to give them there because. But to be fair, Mike, I mean, these are two programs, and we really just didn't know what was it going to look like. Mm-hmm. We we knew that it was going to be a rebuild, but. South Carolina, I mean, LSU was gutted. Florida was stripped to the, the, the bones, you know, and, and you just thought if anybody had an opportunity to, to, to come second in the East, that that would be the, the easiest spot. So I got to I think I'm going to go Billy just because, you, you know, here's, here's Florida Gators. You know, we convinced ourselves that th- these guys couldn't make a run and potentially be the second best team in the SEC East. And they had the, I think one of the easier paths as opposed to LSU, but yeah, uh, either way you slice it, man, we were just way off on both of these squads. And, and um, I, I think I'm more surprised. Let's give LSU the credit. I'm, I'm more surprised that, that they rise up and, and, and then Florida falling down. So, and you know, um, what's one of the reasons I love college football so much, Shane, remember, if you, it's hard to remember this far back, but week one of the season, Florida pulls the massive upset, beats Utah. Anthony Richardson looked just yeah. absolutely incredible. We're sit, I was sitting here saying, my God, I nailed another one. <laughs> and LSU, I mean, they looked awful against Florida, Florida State. State. Yeah. National televised, that was a Monday night, so everybody's watching. Everybody's overreacting. There's no way anybody – if they're being honest with themselves, could have watched those two games and said, well, Florida's going to fall apart. They're going to lose all their key games. <laughs> LSU's going to rise to win the West. I mean, that right there, the unpredictability of college football, it's, it's a big reason why I love it. And this year in particular, I, I don't know about you, Mike, and I don't know if we say this every year, but it felt like this season was so vulnerable. Like yeah. one thing goes wrong, one thing goes good, and, and it just changed the entire season. I mean, we're talking Alabama not making an SEC championship. We're talking uh, Tennessee beating Bama. We're talking yeah. LSU going to an SEC championship on their first year. I mean, there was just – Texas A&M not making a bowl game. I mean, it, and we're going to get to them here in a second, I'm sure. <laughs> but I'm just saying, all this this felt like just a wild, wild season. And let me, do you think that is a preview of things to come, or do you think this is just kind of a one off? No, I think this, and maybe it's, maybe I'm just a little biased because I kind of want it to happen. But I think this is the way we're trending. More often yeah. than not, Shane, with the NIL, with the mm-hmm. transfer portal, I mean, you can have so much momentum and then it can all be taken out from you. Or you can Absolutely. be down in the dumps and your team can be fixed overnight. I mean, you look at, like, what's been, what's going on at Auburn right now. Yeah. I mean, they – it may be going too far to say they're going to, you know, win the West or anything like that, but I think they're going to be a major, major improved. I think Kentucky is going to be major improved. Um, we'll get to that. I don't want to ruin the tail end here, but I think there's there's reason for optimism for a lot of these programs. Whereas if you're at the top right now, man, you gotta you gotta <laughs> work, continue to work. <laughs> Nothing is given to you because as soon as you think you got all this momentum, you know players can transfer, coaches can leave, injuries happen, and all of mm-hmm. a sudden your roster is can just be you know night and day shattered, so to speak. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and it's just it, it feels like it feels like the NFL almost, you know. It's like you know, you think about the some of these teams that just like the Patriots, they won year and year. You know, we're not seeing that anymore. It's just these right. teams keep popping up and all it takes is the perfect recipe of players through the NIL or through the transfer portal and then boom, you're right there. So, I, I just I think that is a taste I'm, I'm with you. I think it's a taste of what's in the future, and I love it, man. I love not knowing what's going to happen. Right. 
Now, how about this one, Shane? Let's get into a couple game predictions. I, I said that, I mean, basically awful all season long. But I, I tried to pick the highlights of ones that we definitely got wrong. We'll start with one. I, I mean, Alabama lost multiple away games. Yeah. And I was sitting here calling them out saying, hey, they're vulnerable on the road. I just picked the wrong game. I picked Arkansas to beat Alabama in Fayetteville. Let's kick it over to the clip. The defense looks like maybe the best in the country, but I think that's a factor of who they've played. But it, you know, they got that ace in their hole in their pocket, Shane, with Bryce Young, who just in the key situations he plays better than just about anybody in the country. Mm -hmm. Alabama does struggle on the road, but at the end of the day, they are Alabama for a reason, Shane. I'm going mm -hmm. Alabama, thirty-five, Arkansas. 38 upset. No. <laughs> oh, you just in bed with them hogs, brother. <laughs> hey, here's what here's what happened, Shane. I pick at least one upset every year with Alabama. Yeah. I'm like 0 for 5, so maybe I'll finally hit one this year. Actual score mm. of the game, Shane, Alabama 49. Arkansas 26, and this was with Bryce Young getting knocked out of the game and missing half of it. I mean, they could have scored 80 points on Arkansas. You know what? Mike, there was a couple moments in that game you were like, <laughs> wait, maybe he's right. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, he was not. And it felt like the kind of the wheels fell off uh, Arkansas after that one. So yeah. I think there was a lot of turmoil, you know, <laughs> losing back-to-back -back games, buddy. That was a – that was a tough one, but man, yeah, you were you were a little off on that one. <laughs> now, how about uh, Shade? It, it, I know a lot of the listeners. We caught a lot of heat for this, but my God, Tennessee was on a run. We were just on cloud nine here. Something we had. Sorry that you know, after two decades of being one of the worst teams in the country, we celebrated Tennessee going on a run. I think we got caught up into it because we both Shane picked Tennessee to go down there to Athens. Beat them Bulldogs. Let's kick it over to those clips. I mean, has anybody stopped and said, well, maybe maybe Bo isn't a good quarterback, you know? So why are we putting stock into Oregon but not with Alabama? So I'm just I, – I just think, you know, Georgia fans are already mad. I can hear them. They, they delete in the podcast and call me a fat ass. I can hear it now. But I'm telling you guys, this thing will get decided by Saturday, and I just think that Tennessee's just got a little too much offense. Hmm. Man, well, you I'm know, just digging a hole. I should just shut up and let you talk, right? <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see. Crowd is going to play a big, big factor, Shane. I cannot believe you're disrespecting them dogs in Athens. <laughs> you are going to be making a big mistake and regretting that one come Sunday, Shane. Final score, Georgia 35, Tennessee 38 upset on the road. <laughs> we got the same score, believe it or not, Shane. Oh, but geez. here it is, Shane. All right, Shane. Actual <laughs> score, 27 to 13. Mm. Rain or not, I mean, that was a whipping right there. I mean, the final score is a little uh, – makes it makes it seem like it was a little bit closer than it actually was. Tennessee scored at the very end, and Georgia took their foot off the gas in the second half. But uh, we could not have been more wrong about that one. Mike, I'd love to have my optimism back from that day, man. <laughs> I tell you what, I was gutted. I was gutted Saturday trying to Google why Stetson doing all these phone call things. What is going on here? You know, <laughs> I was off. I was wrong, man. I but I was I was I, I was in my feels, man. I, I thought I thought there was an opportunity here for them Tennessee Vols, and and you could see that there's a difference between national champs and top five. So uh, <laughs> they they really flex, and thank God they didn't TCU our ass because <laughs> they could have. It felt like. <laughs> now another one, Shane. Uh, we were both wrong about, but uh, your clip is just kind of the the most funniest, and I know it wasn't funny at the time, but. Looking back, we were in person, South mm. Carolina, Tennessee. I mean, we didn't even think this was in consideration that the Gamecocks no. could cover what was, I think, a 20-something point spread. Let's kick it over to Shane's optimism heading into this game in Columbia. <laughs> well, how about this one, Shane? Number five, Tennessee, on the road at South Carolina. 
Tennessee favored by 21 and a half points, mm -hmm. over under 66. Game kicks off at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central on ESPN. Yeah, Mike. You know, I've been touting them Gamecocks all off season. Yep. I was one of the guys that bought into the hype. Yep. The Rattler love, the Lloyd love. I mean, I was convincing myself that South Carolina was going to upset some folks this year, Mike. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but it ain't going to be this week. <laughs> 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 nothing nothing against South Carolina. I, I just think that right now the wheels are falling off, brother. There's they're in turmoil. There's yeah. the fans are out on half the coaching staff. The fans are out on some of these players, man. I see it and I hate I hate when I, you know, I don't like picking on players because sometimes the coaching staff does put these kids in in, in a bad spot. Um, you know, Beamer said all the right things this week, but it was almost like he was cushioning up for a blowout and he, yeah. you know, so, making it a little bit softer for the fans. Actual yeah, so. score, Shane. South Carolina 63, Tennessee 38. Oh, my mm, God. Look at that cocky bastard just <laughs> chilling. I was three sheets in the wind in that episode. I was not – I was not – I did not care. I was about as prepared to that football game as our defense was, Mike. I just – I just knew we were going to go over and steamroll, and I, I said a few nice things about the fans, and but buddy, we got smoked, and I, and that game haunts me, man. It haunts me to this day. It'll haunt me forever. Every time I see South Carolina, I used to see Spurrier's face. Now I see I see that ass beating we took in Columbia. So I don't want to see that ever again, Mike. It, that just a show. That's a statement. Come into a game ill prepared, you will get your ass kicked, no matter who you're playing. So. Oh, man, I don't want to revisit that one. I'm going to get – that's a bad thing, Mike. I get reminded every, every time that there I, – I get drug into these – I know you do too. You get drug into these arguments. Uh -huh. And it's Tennessee versus South Carolina. And I've seen that score <laughs> screenshot more than I've seen anything, Mike. You know, it's like they got it on a roll and they can't wait to show it. And i got to look at it all summer long until we get a chance to play each other. All right, Shane, probably my favorite one of any of these, the final one we got. Cousin Shane oh. unveils his pick, not to win the SEC West, mind oh you, to God. win the conference. Let's kick it over to Cousin Shane from SEC Media Days, who he cast his ballot for. You know, is, is Even when, when if we got answers on those questions, that's not going to change the real story here. The real story is, is this the year Texas A&M is going to mm -hmm. make some damn noise in the SEC? Right. You know, the, 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 no more excuses, no more bullshit. You know, right. this is I, – I, I've went on – in fact – as soon as I put that ballot in there, um, I, what, what, I oh yeah, are you going to reveal your ballot yet? Or? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that at the end. Yeah, I want to do that. Uh, well, you, let me just go ahead and knock this one out. Okay. So I'm going get it over with. <laughs> Texas A&M, I got win in it all. Okay, Whoa. yes, I do. I got them not only win in the West. I'm clipping that I, up. I got them win in the SEC championship. As soon as I submit. An hour later, I find about a nice, and I'm like, "How do I, how do I get back in there and change this thing?" You know, so, um, you know, I, I, I joke, but this, this, yeah, this is the year, man. I, I think you got the monkey off your back with Saban, you know. And I just, I don't want to hear the excuses. And it, and it felt like this was just noise, yeah, uh, for for A and M. This was, you know, this should have been a business trip. We're here to do a thing, mm -hmm. and that thing is win a championship. Texas A and M. Oh my god. This one was so damn bad, Mike sent it to me twice. <laughs> you know, and it's funny because I go back to that day, and, and it got out that one person in that room picked Texas A&M to win the <laughs> SEC championship. And everybody knows who it is because I never ran away from this vote. But only to find out that this program would not even make a bowl game shows you how cursed I am, Mike. I, I felt so bad for, for Texas Aggie fans because – this one, I I did it. I did it to them, and uh, I apologize. And a nice Smith, that should have been the that should have been the writing on the. I should have known something was going to happen. Yeah. So, uh, but damn, I was that was a bad one, Mike. <laughs> That's on me. <laughs> so there's no one doing that one. I we're ready to close this one out, Shay. But before we go, hey, I just thought we just made ourselves look foolish making all these yeah. bold predictions. Do you have? Any you'd like to share for the upcoming season? Maybe you need to think about it, but I think I've got one. And again, things can change, so maybe don't exactly hold us to this. 
Of course, if we're right, we're going to clip it and say, oh, man, we were we nailed it in January. I, I've, I think I've got a bold take. Do you have one for the upcoming season? I'll let you. I'll let you go first. Let me let me think. I'm narrowing mine down here. Okay, how about this, Shane? And again, I don't. I'm done picking on the Aggies. I don't. I don't want to. Uh-huh. I'm trying to be positive. We just, you know, we kind of mocked them with that, with your selection there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw them a little olive branch here, Shane. I don't have the date in front of me, but it doesn't matter when the game's played. Give me Texas A&M at home to beat. Alabama, I'm calling it now. I really do think the Aggies. Again, I'm I'm trying to pump the brakes a little bit because they, you know, they they don't want all the all the hype these days. They want to come from uh, behind the scenes, so to speak. I th- yeah. I love this hire of Bobby Petrino. I love what that takes off of Jimbo's plate. I think just given his track record of play calling and coaching up quarterbacks. I think this is a match made in heaven. The most talent Bobby Petrino is ever going to get to work with here in College Station. Not sitting here saying a and going to win the West, win the, go to the college football playoff or anything like that. But they get up for Alabama more than any other game. It's in College mm-hmm. Station. Nearly beat them last year in Tuscaloosa. I think they get it done in College Station two times <laughs> in a row against Alabama. How about that? I love it, man. All right, I got you two hot takes, Mike. How about this? You ready? Two yes, hot sir. takes. Now, this is hot takes. Right. You can't stop the recording now and then take what I say and then say, Shane predicted this. <laughs> I'm saying, bold take right now, LSU goes back to an SEC championship next year. <laughs> I think they got one of the best quarterbacks in the business. Obviously, uh, oh Butte going, you know that was a, that was a a, a sting. But yeah. I think they bounced back. I think I think LSU is better next year on both sides of the ball. And another season of off season with Kelly, I think that's a dangerous recipe. Uh, the West is going to be dicey. Mm-hmm. I think there's going to be a lot. I think. Th- Similar, I think we may look at a one-loss, two-loss team getting in. I, I just think it's going to be very competitive. And uh, so my hot take is that LSU will be representing the West again. Now, my, on the east side, Mike, my Tennessee homers, they're going to love this one. Milton is going to be a Heisman candidate Ooh. when the first polls come out in November. <laughs> just uh, I know I know I know they're saying Shane you are an idiot you're an absolute <laughs> dumb dumb yes you're probably right but this is a hot take you said it on many shows Mike Heupel's offense is going to produce Heisman candidates just yep. by their numbers alone I think Milton gets it right I think a lot of people gave him a hard time last few seasons yep. um, he, he showed a little glimpse of it during that Clemson game and if he can hone in on it and, and get some chemistry he's got it he's got the job he can't lose the job it's on him mm-hmm. and if if he comes out here and produces I think with those numbers and the arm and the talent alone, I think Tennessee has another Heisman candidate. Doesn't, I'm not saying he's going to win it, but I say he will be in the at least the top six, top seven, uh, first of November. Yeah, we, I believe uh, I'm in a text thread with Cousin Shane. He's already betting people that Milton yeah. Heisman finalist out there. He's saying mm-hmm. so. <laughs> <laughs> Not that's on what this show. is. He's not saying yeah. it on the show. He's saying no, it on the text no. thread. That's, but, uh, that's that's a hot take. That's a hot take. <laughs> and uh, uh, is there any others? I mean, because we're so bad at it. And we, we might as well. Is there any other teams you'd like to call out? Because, I mean, we've mentioned Texas A&M. We mentioned Alabama, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Any other programs that, that either alarms us in the good way or a bad way? Because, you know, a hot take can be a bad team, too. Right. Here here's one, Shane. I think this team maybe I'm just trying to I'm trying to soothe, you know, uh teams I I put down all season. Yeah. I think one of the biggest turnarounds in the SEC next season mm-hmm. is gonna be up there in Lexington, Kentucky. Now they got a hit on this quarterback that's in from NC State. Many people, Steven Lassen, friend of the show, says he's the best quarterback in the transfer portal. They got him. They got yeah. Liam Cohen back. They've had they've had an excellent defense. They got Ray Davis. We loved him at Vanderbilt. Um, I think, and with the weapons they have to work with, if they can get the offensive line going, man, the sky's the limit for Kentucky. Now, the problem for them, they're they're 
problem with everybody in that division. They're they're in the division with Georgia. So yeah, I mean it would be a miracle to upend Georgia. So I'm not I'm not ready to go that far. But um, hell, Liam Cohen's offense. You know they they remember two years ago when Georgia on the defense you just couldn't move the ball. They were one of the few that uh, you know found a way to do it. So. I, I realize different players and everything, but I think Kentucky is in for a huge back, bounce back season. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, lo- I love how this is breaking down. You're going to get into, uh, um, the, you know, just the free, I don't want to call it free agency, but the transfer portal. Right. You know, it, it's it's just watching it and, and just how these teams are going to be so different next year. It's mm-hmm. it's. I love it. I can't wait. I cannot wait. To, to see where we where we messed up again because you know it's funny because probably a team we didn't mention is going to win the SEC championship next year. South Carolina is like, yeah, you just keep talking, you fat ass. You, know? <laughs> you just keep going, and we're going to win again. Or, or maybe it's the other Columbia. Who knows? Maybe Mizzou steps up with all that talent they got there at wide receiver. So I, I don't know. I, I just that's the beauty. I of- also have my eye on Auburn, Shane. I think Auburn can make a huge step. Again, it's tough because they obviously got to yeah. play Alabama and Georgia. I mean, right. it doesn't get any tougher than that. Uh, but I think they're going to be significantly better. You know, it'd probably take two or three years for them to, to actually be a contender to win the West, win the SEC. But, man, it's happening quicker. That's what we said about LSU, and they turned right yeah. around and they got it done. Yeah, I love it, man. And if Florida can get their GoFundMe page going down there, maybe they'll have a quarterback, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's a story for a different day. But I appreciate yeah, I you, brother. I, I hope these takes, you know, we're probably going to be using them in a year from now, but laughing about that's how right. awful they are. But I hope everybody appreciated, hey, we say some stuff. If we're going to ge- be totally wrong, maybe we miss some that you want to highlight. Send, you know, Remind us. <laughs> I'll throw them on another show. Uh, we're, we're not going to run away from our terrible takes. No. We had some in the past, and I guarantee we're going to have some in the future. But uh, this this was a good time going down memory lane. Yeah, it really was, Mike. And, and I'm uh, again, I'm not leaving. I'm not disappearing. I'm going to be making brief. I'll be popping up here and there. So so you'll you'll still have a little dose of Cousin Shane. But uh, but again, I just, you know, spend some time with your family if you got them and and, and love on them. Because, you know, like I, I will say, and, you know, you only get so many trips around the sun. So uh, love the ones you're with. Absolutely. Uh, well, appreciate you, buddy. I appreciate everyone tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. All right. See you guys. Go Vols. What about Milton winning the Heisman? That's a hot take. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Am I? <laughs> <laughs>